What's going on guys, it's Jeff for MadHattersReef.com and today we're going to be taking a look at the short film Saving Coral. Alright guys, so I'm really excited about this. The director of this film actually contacted me a while back and asked if I would share this with you guys. And uh, of course, um, I was willing to do that. I think it's really important as hobbyists that we do everything that we can to protect the wild reefs. And when I was at Magna this year, Walt Smith gave a presentation that actually included this film, which talks a lot about what Walt Smith has done over the years and the aid project. In this video, we're gonna watch the entire film, Saving Corals, and there's gonna be some ads throughout this video, and all of the proceeds that are generated from the ads are going to be going to the aid project. And if you guys wanna to donate to the aid project, there's gonna be a link in the description below that's gonna take you to their website where you can do that. All right, so that's enough out of me. Let's jump into Justin Medwig's film, Saving Coral. Vast, tranquil, mysterious. Oceans and coral reefs impact everyone from around the world, even those of us who don't live nearby. Making up 71% of the Earth's surface, they provide us with resources we rely on every day, such as food, medicine, and even jobs. In fact, over two-thirds of the oxygen in Earth's atmosphere comes from marine plants in the ocean. The Pacific Ocean is the largest ocean on Earth, spreading nearly halfway around the world and was originally referred to as the Peaceful Sea. Unfortunately, things are not so peaceful anymore. The coral reefs that we know today bear little resemblance to the thriving communities of millions upon millions of symbiotic creatures they were just 50 years ago. Scientists predict that the accelerated destruction of these ecosystems will lead to a complete devastation within our children's lifetime. The changes taking place seem to be well beyond our control. Or are they? Fiji is no stranger to this devastation. Its reefs have fallen victim to severe bleaching episodes, many wiping out over half of the coral population at a time. Marine protected areas have been set up to help assist in the rehabilitation of these natural wonders, but unfortunately fall short due to an increase in cyclones, temperature increases, and industrialization. Certainly there's a lot of concern uh, with regard to the health of uh, coral reefs, and uh, they, of course, provide the basis uh, for for uh, uh, the livelihoods of, of the coastal people and uh, are the basis of, of uh, tourism as well uh, to a large extent. So uh, they're, they're pretty valuable to Fiji. We have had a major coral bleaching in, in uh, 2000 in which 60 to 80 percent of the corals died. Other natural uh, problems that have affected the reef, Cyclone Winston for instance, the uh, strongest cyclone to hit Fiji and in fact in the, the uh, southwest Pacific uh, really hammered uh, areas where it, it passed through. We've seen more cyclones, we've seen stronger ones, we've seen coral bleaching where we never had coral bleaching before, uh, the 2000 event. So the coral reefs themselves uh, seem to be the victim of uh, many of the predictions of climate change. Coral reefs around the world are really in peril right now. I think that's acknowledged by every coral reef uh, scientist. All of us who have been around for decades, uh, it's hard to find a reef today that is as good as it was 20, 30 years ago, uh, many of them because of pollution, uh, siltation, and certainly climate change with uh, over uh, very warm oceans and carbon dioxide uh, causing ocean acidification. So reefs around the world, including Fiji, are being heavily impacted by these uh, uh, factors. 
among the many ways that we can act now uh, is to look at what is already existing. And the AID project is one good example where we have uh, the knowledge and experience, many years of experience of culturing and raising corals. This was originally for the aquarium tray, but it has many other valuable uh, uses, including uh, taking many of these corals and repopulating uh, reefs. After studying at the University of the South Pacific, I was interested to learn more about coral reefs in terms of what's happening, what is out there, and more at that stage, I just wanted to explore. There wasn't much availability at the University of the South Pacific, and I looked around. I was lucky to be able to join Wolf Smith International, a company at that point was doing uh, coral cultures, setting up coral farms, and they needed a marine biologist. I was hired as a marine biologist and got involved into learning how to do coral culture, setting underwater coral farms, understanding the coral reef ecosystems, growth, and at the same time understanding the business part of the, the coral culture. This experience helped me to later ex take this knowledge from the industry side towards fisheries management, to MPA management, where a lot of interest was raising to restore coral reefs that were dying from coral bleaching or coastal development. We need more corals. We need more coral farms. We need more coral restoration to help back restore our fisheries. So what exactly is coral farming? The idea came to Walt Smith of WSI in 1998 after he and his wife Deborah were surveying cyclone destruction on a Fijian reef. The storm's impact was devastating. The majority of the once large and magnificent coral colonies were now completely destroyed, leaving only tiny battered fragmentations to rest on the ocean's floor. After returning to the same site months later, they discovered that a few of those fragments had begun to grow and were now small coral colonies. Almost immediately, WSI began experimenting and replicating this, and later that year developed the first successful coral farming process, which is still widely used today around the globe. The process involves using hundreds of smaller coral cuttings from a large colony, essentially cloning the coral. This ensures the larger colony will stay in the wild and continue to grow. In order to keep the coral cuttings secure and to provide a base for grow out, special plugs are made for the corals to be placed in. Once ready for transplanting, the new fragments are taken out to a farm site that has been predetermined to have the right conditions for the newly planted corals to thrive. They are placed on racks and will spend the next few months growing under the special care of the trained coral farmers. Currently, WSI is capable of planting up to 60,000 pieces of new coral every year. However, not all of these corals can be exported for the aquarium trade. That's because many of the fragments do not grow up to be the right size, the right shape, or the right color. In fact, out of every 10 pieces of coral farmed, nine of them won't meet the requirements of the aquarium trade and therefore will never be exported. So what happens to all of the corals that don't make the cut? That's what makes WSI's approach to sustainable farming so unique. This small tray of coral is being collected for export and will soon be on its way around the world to set up beautiful displays for public aquariums and hobbyists alike. The majority of these corals have grown too large or the wrong shape to be exported. Instead, these will be planted a few meters away and will be charged with the greatest opportunity of all, to help grow into what will soon be a biodiverse and colorful coral reef teeming with new life once again.
Over the next decade, WSI created and maintained many of these man-made reefs around their farm sites. These reefs quickly became aquatic metropolises and were thriving in biodiversity, including the presence of some species of fish are not normally found in these locations. Coral farm is something that people literally see is just something new and they don't associate it with fish. But as all marine biologists and all people working in the sea, they know that when you have coral, you will have fish. Um, if you go to some of the reefs, you will literally see the corals are dying. I think the link now is literally to show to the public that what we're doing is environment friendly. It has no adverse effect on the environment or what it really does. It, brings the fish back. That will uh, sort of assist the environment to balance itself by uh, the human hand, human touch, that is. Many villages here in Fiji, they've been given what we call in Fijian, stambu, means you're not allowed to do any fishing. They preserve that, that whole area to re for the reef to rebuild and for the fish to come in. It will be easy for them to catch their fish in their daily lives. But still, we can see that most of these places where they given the tambu, their reef is still dead until now. There's no improvement on that. We are involved in uh, protecting our marine resources, eh? our fishing ground. And we have uh, invited uh, most of the NGOs. We have tambus there. Eh? We have our marine protected areas. Eh? But the people are not abiding by that law. And we have, don't have the power to implement those laws ourselves. Eh? So we are asking the government if they can enforce those laws to regulate some act, regulation, eh? so that we can, we can implement this to enforce the law, so that we can protect our, our marine resources area. If we, if we create more farm, that will create more fish. I think the people will be able to, you know, to respect the Tambu area. Eh? With coastal Fijian villages seeing a decrease in their fish populations as well as the reef's rapid decline, why couldn't coral farms be implemented on a much larger scale in the villages to help bring balance back? This is when the idea was born for WSI's aid project, Aquaculture Development for the Environment. In 2012, two farms, solely funded by WSI, were put into place in the northern district of Vanua Levu to test the process. The concept is simple. WSI supplies everything necessary for successful coral farming. They train the villagers and pay them based on the amount of corals they grow and place back on the reef. Through trial and error, the rebuilding of coral reefs through coral farming has been running successfully for almost 19 years. But there's still more work to do. In the past four years, I started in this company. I worked with this coral farming project that WSI introduced here in Fiji. My job is to go out to the sea, get broodstocks, cut them up in pieces, Replant them again. When they grow big, we replant them back to the main reef. The farm that we have, that we build in Rundru Island, it helps them bring close the fish to the island, to the village people, so they can get fish every day. Before, that was not happening. Why? Because the reef was dead, all dead. I saw it in my own eyes when I came to start the farm. There's nothing there, not, not even a fish at all. But now, it's 100% sure. They get the fish 
don't have to spend more fuel going far. The fish is coming close to them. They can sell it to town. They have more income every day. So that's why this project is very important to the villages. We, we discovered that uh, the catch is more improved. There are a lot of fishes of fish eh, in the sea. Rather than before, we hardly, you know, have a good catch. But now we, we thought it was uh, because of coral farming. A lot of fish around in the area. If we have more coral farm in each village, one village, one coral farm, I think we'll, more fish will, you know, will supply more fishes. And supply more fish and uh, including more money, you know, to buy other things rather than burden the sea. I think it's a good idea to um, request the villages because uh, uh, all these years that I've been doing farming, uh, I've seen the progress on the coral growth and uh, fish that are coming up to the reefs. I think it's a good way of uh, um, preserving the reef and then uh, uh, definitely, I think it will be bring more fish. The aid project can also help with the development of ecotourism through the many resorts located on the water where the coral reef is the main draw. By placing grow out racks within the reach of the resort guests, they will have an opportunity to witness coral growth and, in some cases, take part in the process of planting it on the reef. The resorts have realized the aid brand will bring in new tourists as well as returning guests wanting to witness the progress of coral they helped plant. The visitors fall in love with the corals they helped grow and become ambassadors for the programs when they share the experience with friends back home. One of the things that is lacking in Fiji, in my opinion, is an ecotourism structure which allows the villages to not just recoup their, their assets of, of the reef, but to actually put back into the reef and, and, and grow corals on the reef and use that as part of ecotourism, uh, which provides an income for them, which, which is repairing the reef, helping the reef redevelop, and maintaining the, the, the fish stocks that, that they use. If that can be put back into the local society, as, as part of maintaining their own reef, their own property, then they can earn income from, from doing just that. The tourists want to see it, and it's a win-win for everybody. One of the ecotourism projects that, that has worked in Fiji and worked well was the coral farm at Hideaway Resort. This was where coral was planted for the specific purpose of growing coral. But as a side benefit, it was placed in paths that the tourists could follow and the guides could go with them and explain exactly what was going on in the coral farm and, and why it was there. Having seen the Hideaway project and seen what it can do, um, this is the direction we need to take with ecotourism. Uh, Hideaway won an ecotourism award that was uh, presented in Turkey many years ago now, in the uh, mid-2000s, which was done in conjunction with Walt Smith, where we set up a coral trail at Hideaway, and it was a great learning experience for all our guests, and we hope to be able to do something similar out here on Treasure. With the coral farm that will be developed, we will certainly hope to make our guests well aware of what's going on, and to get them actively involved in the process, so that they can get an understanding of the life cycle of the coral and what's involved in planting and growing and looking after coral and enabling us to plant more coral on the reefs and to repopulate the reefs that suffer badly at times from cyclones and from global warming. So where we can help to offset that uh, damage that's caused, it'll be fantastic. And I'm sure all our guests will love to participate in helping to repopulate the reefs. It is about time now to show the people that we need to work together, not only the companies, but the skills that they learn. They can, uh, uh, like uh, coral planting, 
that can be beneficial to the community as a whole, not only in the north, but all of Fiji. Coral reefs are, are disappearing very quickly in many areas of the world, and uh, Fiji has some <clears throat> outstanding coral reefs right now, and it's really important to be proactive in protecting those reefs uh, well into the future. So uh, the, the aid project is one good example of, of how we should be, uh, could be managing our reefs and our corals for the future. Ten years ago, I learned a pilot project. I learned the baby steps, how this, this could be done. In terms of we were learning the science, we were learning what it takes to make this happen. We know now, over the 10-year period, we have learned all these pieces. Now is the time to scale it up. And this is what Fiji needs. Many countries are looking Fiji as an example in terms of understanding how coral culture is done, coral restoration efforts, how it has worked, what has been the success, what has been the lessons learned. This is the home of the knowledge box. We need to bring this into our education system. Now is the time to bring the aid project to a community level. This will take time, dedication and outside funding, but what we will learn from this project could change the way we understand coral reef ecology. With the help of outside donors, assistance can be provided for the infrastructure, technical guidance, and wages that will benefit rural communities and the environment they depend on. Scientific discovery is also a beneficiary of these efforts. This work provides a vast resource for continued study of how the coral reef grows and reacts to climate change as well as other influences that impact its survival. The Aquaculture Development for the Environment project is a crucial step to ensure the survival of many species as they learn to adapt in our ever-changing world. <laughs>